Welcome to our fifth live streaming mock interviews for software engineering positions. At this session, we have three hiring managers and four anonymous candidates. Each candidate will have 25 minutes, and after that, each manager will give them an honest feedback. Please subscribe to our channel to get more live interviews. Let's go. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today is our anonymous mock interview session number five already uh, with the hiring managers, with um, four software engineers, which is, we are doing this the first time. Previously, it was for uh, software testers and QA engineers. Okay, let me share my screen. So, first of all, I wanna welcome our um, managers and I really appreciate that all you guys are doing. Uh, our managers, they volunteered their time to give and provide the feedback to our candidates and welcome Benosh, uh, Zakaria, he's engineering manager of Flowcast, at Flowcast, uh, Min Pham, he's engineering manager at Ibota, Alex Korzikov, he's a tech lead at ING um, company, and uh, my name is Evgeny Kim. I'm the host of today's session, right? So if you guys first time here, um, actually, can you guys in the chat hit the plus sign, whoever is the very first time and never saw our previous sessions? Nice. Did you guys saw our YouTube uh, uh, videos, the previous recordings? Can you hit minus if you didn't? If you didn't. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. That's awesome. That's awesome. We have a very, very fresh new, a uh, lot of fresh new people. All right. Let me tell you how it works and what it's going to be. So every candidate, we have four brave candidates who will be anonymous uh, uh, with us. And um, they each of them will have 25 minutes, 20, 25 minutes. They should have prepared for the first two questions that they know we're gonna ask them. First question is gonna be, tell me about yourself. It will be a limit for one minute. And second question will be, oh, what did you do at your last project, which is limited for three minutes. It can be combined, um, but overall the limit is four minutes. After that, I'll put the, I mean, I will put the timer and if the timer will, it will basically cut off. <laughs> uh, we try not to be rude, but we have to be uh, li limit. I mean, we have to be fit in the time frame. And uh, the third, uh, it's gonna be follow-up questions from uh, Vinoj, Min and Alex. Uh, they will be asking whatever they think they need to ask. <laughs> and uh, it's gonna be for about 10 minutes. Um, and the feedback will be provided right after. The feedback format what will be what went well for the performance and what candidate can improve. And basically overall the feedback. Sounds good. All right, let's get started. I'll stop sharing my screen and candidate number one. Are you ready? All right, I should be ready. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So please share your screen. I'll put the timer for uh, four minutes. All right, here we go. All right, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, please, ZT candidate number one, <laughs> tell us about yourself. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm candidate number one. Uh, a little awesome. background about myself. My background is actually in mechanical engineering. That's what I studied in university and the degree that I graduated with. I initially got into the world of web development after learning and building WordPress websites. I fell in love with the world of web development and actually decided to become a freelance web designer. And I did that for quite some time. I built many 
different WordPress websites for small businesses and entrepreneurs. And overall, I had a wonderful time and I learned a lot. But more recently though, I wanted to get into higher level web development. And so for most of the past year, I learned how to build web applications using React and JavaScript. And I got myself familiar with the other popular tools that are really prevalent in the front end development world. Things like uh, pre CSS compilers like SAS and app component testing with just an enzyme. Um, a front end focused guy, but I got the full stack experience using the MVC design pattern with Node.js, Express, and MongoDB. And I'm currently looking for my, for a junior developer position as a front end engineer. And that is what's bringing me to this spot today. All right, can you tell us about your last project? Like uh, that's a little bit more deep. What did you, what did you do there? Okay, sure. Um, so I had like two projects that I want to talk about. Uh, the first one is that I created a fun little app with React.js that allowed my users to create their very own memes and share them on their social, nice. social media platform. Um, so the most challenging aspect of the app was in organizing the raw images that came from doing the initial get request in, uh, for the all of the meme templates that my users could use. So the raw images, they were, when they came in, they were not all standardized and they had different dimensions, different sizes. And so I had to configure the images in such a way that once it's been, it has been processed, uh, the image were like really displayed beautifully on the browser. And to do that, I did a combination of using the CSS grid system, as well as some React attributes to dynamically calculate the spacing needed to properly display the images. And what the end result was that like the images end up looking like a perfectly laid tiles on your screen. Uh, another project that I was really proud of is like a full stack application using the MERN stack, which is Mongo Express and Node. And the reason why I want to do that is because I wanted to get like a 30,000 foot view of what web application work in general. And I felt that building both the back end and the front end, uh, it allowed me to gain a better understanding of like how data gets better, gets handled and utilized in the world of web development. And I kind of felt like that it made me become a better front end developer because I'm kind of able to better diagnose where problems may be occurring once I build my web apps. Uh, so these are the two projects that I recently did and I continue to educate myself on front end development by doing projects even onto this day. Nice, right on time. Um, me and Vinosh, Alex, follow up questions. Um, yeah, I, I can go first. Um, so with the first app that you were talking about that, um, I'm a big fan of memes, so happy to hear about memes. Um, so the user uploads their own images and, uh, or is it that they're selecting from pre-made meme templates? Oh, I should have clarified. Yeah, I use like the image flip API. So I, they were pre-made templates, yeah, so. Okay, okay. And then after that, I can put my own funny text on there. Is that the basic idea? That's exactly what it is. Great, great. Um, at the end of it, am I able to download it? How do I like, um, you know, I want to uh, make a, a meme and then put it in my Slack channel so all my friends give me those reactions and I feel awesome for the day, right? <laughs> um, uh, how would that happen? Um, if I wanted to put it into Slack, you said? Yeah, not the Slack integration, but could I just download the image or is it purely the sharing to some kind of social account? Because I think you mentioned some kind of social sharing. Right, uh, it's pure, at this stage is purely social sharing uh, and specifically Facebook and Twitter. And I use their uh, developer, I guess, their, their API in order to make that happen. Cool, I'll, I'll open up for others too. 
Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of curious, uh, has, has this project made it in front of your friends? Have you shown people this? Have they started using it? Um, I showed it to like my friends and they thought that they were, it was kind of cool, but uh, for them, it was like, okay, cool that you built this, but you know, it's a nice little, <laughs> it's a nice little project for you, but you know, <laughs> but you know, it's a good job. Good job that you did it. But as right. far as them, you know, making it go viral or anything like that, uh, nothing of that sort. I mean, it was a personal project for my friend, myself and my friends. Your friends yeah, just you- very kind. <laughs> <laughs> How did how did you, how did that make you feel? <laughs> I mean, I would say slightly disappointed. I mean, but overall, though, I'm super proud of the application and the, um, I guess I'm super proud of the application and like the ingenuity that I put into it in order to make it work the way it worked. So, very nice, very nice. Right. Uh, if I may, so uh, I have two small questions. Uh, the first one, uh, so now you, you touched uh, basically a backend field a little, you fr- touched a uh, front end and uh, you said that you were also interested in design. So what, what do you think uh, you, you'd like to focus more in the future? What, what do you find the most attractive? And the second, how do you uh, usually learn? What, what is your way of learning? Okay, cool. So my my goal is to become a front-end developer because that is what I am passionate about. I love manipulating DOM objects and things like that on screen. And the reason why I like doing that is because, you know, I can build something, I can see it and be proud of it. And it's kind of like a feedback loop where I build something, I just feel proud of it. And then on and on it goes. And um, as far as how I learned, I would say that, um, I usually look for like tutorials or like um, I would Google something or like if I see an, an aspect of a website that I want to rebuild, I would look at that research it, and see how it was built. And then once uh, I see how it's built, I try to implement what I learned and build my own projects. And then there's a lot of challenges that, that comes with that. And then once I complete it, I like to uh, showcase it to the world when I can. Very nice. Uh, I'd like to uh, kind of dovetail on that question a little bit. What do you think is the most important thing for you to accomplish in this next year for yourself? Uh, for me, I would say, I guess, getting that first position as a first junior developer, because it's really great that I can build all these apps on my own and whatnot, but I lack the experience in terms of working with a team and working on a project that is at a professional level. So I think that it's a great opportunity if I could get a developer position to contribute the skills that I've learned, but also uh, learn a lot from people who are way better than me, thus uplifting my, I guess, my personal development and also my experience. Um, I had a question. So um, you started with mechanical engineering. If we kind of go back a little sure, bit, right? Sure, sure. Uh, mechanical engineering, and you started doing web design. A slight right. shift there, right? Um, yeah. Um, it sounds, like, and I loved your answer earlier about like, hey, I like that feedback loop, right? Yeah. Can you, uh, to do, go a little bit deeper there, tell me about that feedback loop when you were doing web design, because even if it's not development, at least with that design part, you're talking to a customer. What were some of the, like, challenges where you're like hey here's my design and then all of a sudden they're like eh can you make it different right um and how did you kind of like uh kind of appease the client or how did you find that middle ground sure um i can like talk about a specific example actually in this even better yeah i mean i had one website that that i had to do for a startup it was an underground construction company and i initially created a web design and a, a landing page for him and then I use I utilize some copywriting skills and landing page uh, best practices, and uh, with that uh, design, there was like a testimonial section where, if they had like a previous client, to display mm-hmm. it so that it act as like a, a social proof, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the, the 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 client he absolutely loved it. However, um, when I asked him probed him more about it. Like it turned out that he didn't have a lot of previous clients. 
So <laughs> that was a section that I had to change. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, you know, talked to him some more and like asked him about his background. And it turned out that he was actually a veteran. And so he's like a, his company was a veteran owned business. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah. yeah. So what I decided to do was take out that testimonial section and kind of emphasize the fact that he is a veteran owned company. And I looked into the internet and like checked out, um, looked for different resources that I could implement on there on that particular section so that it kind of appeals to a certain audience. You know, I'm a veteran owned company, you know, I serve my country and things like that, trying to sell his services from that perspective. And I redesigned it, sent it back to him. He loved it. I implemented it. Project was A-OK. -okay. <laughs> awesome. Do you guys have any other um, questions or you want to move to feedback? I have one more, if that's OK. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. We'll, uh, have, we'll have time, plenty of time. OK, great. Uh, one more I had was like, so. Uh, it's cool to hear that, like, hey, I, I wanted to understand, like, if I'm a front-end developer, what 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 does a back-end developer need from me, right? So you get that picture. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but as a, if you want to, like, get really good at front-end, I think it's a little bit to Alex's question, maybe a little bit to Min's question. What specifically are you excited about? Like, you know, if I can learn that, I will, I don't want to say made it, but, you know, like that, <laughs> will, that will take me to the next level. What does that look like for you? Oh, wow. Um, I think like implementing a very complicated user interface, for example, uh, a very complicated user face where I know the ins and outs of um, how JavaScript works with that user interface and me utilizing all of the modern tools associated with JavaScript, for example, Redux and things like that, right. where I can have a mastery of that particular user face and I just know it like the back of my hand. That would be what I would idealize as, you know, I, I really made it and I would be able to present it to any of my employers or fellow friends if they care about it <laughs> and um, and they would be really impressed with it. I mean, I think on the top of my head, like something like maybe something, maybe Facebook or something like that, it could be, it would be an example because there's a lot of like things going on, things popping up in here and there and things like that. It would be, that, that would be some, that's kind of what I can think of on the top of my head right now, but that's really what I can say for now. Yeah. Awesome. I think that is awesome. Do we have time for one more question, maybe? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, cool. So you mentioned, uh, you mentioned that you really wanted to start working with a team and start building more software uh, with a team. What do you think is your strongest quality that you would bring to a team? Um, I, like off the bat, I would say my work ethic I'm, ex I'm very relentless in trying to do things that I need to get accomplished. And um, I'm always humble, always learning, always willing to learn from my teammates. Um, and the biggest thing that I would contribute is, I think as of right now, because I am a junior developer, it would definitely be my work ethic. So <laughs> that's the best answer that I can come up with it for now. Yeah, no, I think, I think that that's excellent. Do you think that there's anything that you would struggle to learn or wouldn't be interested in learning? I mean, I absolutely love the world of web development and I enjoy learning all aspects of it. And so, and I, I am, and, I, and I'm also a fast learner too. So even though obviously there's gonna be stuff, stuff that are more harder than others, but I'm pretty confident that I can learn what I need to learn in order to get the job done. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. I remember myself uh, answering the, uh, also the question about the complex uh, design or the website which with a complex UI. And uh, my choice was like a something like Google Sheets, but that was like 10 years ago. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Very, very, very nice uh, answering. Thank you. All right, guys. You want to move with the feedback? Sure. Yeah, sure. 
Okay, so what went well? Um, I'll, I'll go then. Um, so uh, what I thought, um, Candidate 1ZT, uh, I really uh, loved your sort of like, it, it felt like we were just talking. Th that's okay. the key, man. Like that, that's the key. Like we're just two people talking. Um, you were very good about like just listening to the question and just going, huh, how does that apply to me? Yeah, and here's the answer. Um, sometimes candidates tend to go go like, I have answered this prepared, I have answered two prepared, and you're just like, hey, you know, yeah, I did this. Oh, I don't know the answer. That was all great, right? Um, I also really liked um, uh, your uh, answer for like how you responded to change, which is a, something that I look for, right? Just in people, you responded to change with that client about that doesn't have the testimonials, right? right? Um, and then you said, hey, but I know this about your background. How do we solve the problem in a different way, right? That problem solving is really a, a, a great piece that I really enjoyed in your interview. Cool. Yeah, I, I guess to add on to that, a uh, couple of other things that you did very well, uh, candidate 1ZT. <laughs> I, I, do, I do really like your, your authenticity in answering um, these questions. Uh, for me, I, I came into this with mostly two things in mind. I wanted to see how you were answering questions and, and based on how you were answering them, what qualities did they demonstrate, right? Uh, like Vinoj said, I think you did very well showing that you are somebody who will absolutely work with the customer and figure out, work with people to figure out what, uh, what it is that they actually need and what you can provide to them. I think that's a very strong quality. Um, Couple of other things, you, you talked a lot about like different technologies and why you wanted to learn that. I got the sense that, you know, you really are interested in, in technology because it's a, it's a fun thing to do for you. It's fun to see the problems and to work through them. That's, that's, all, very, uh, that's all very positive. Ooh. I don't, I don't have much uh, to add uh, very, uh, to, uh, to the feedback, um, but, uh, uh, yeah, in, in my impression was uh, that uh, the answer was uh, the answer answers were uh, very direct. You were answering also very calm and um, yeah, you were very sure in what what you're answering. So that's uh, that uh, shows that uh, you have a vision on on your future. That's uh, that's nice. Uh, just uh, maybe something to think about. At least that what um, <clears throat> catches me a bit. It's uh, always. Um, uh, CVs. Uh, when I see lots of uh, technologies in there, uh, be careful with that because, uh, yeah, if if someone is uh, is really um, wanted to find something um, as a drawback in a CV, uh, probably these uh, technologies. Yeah, maybe maybe that's uh, too much. I would maybe mention less uh, less technologies on on my list. But uh, yeah, maybe that's uh, something when you learn. Uh, afterwards, you have an interview. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll take note of that. Yeah, what I think that that is actually what can be improved. Um, yeah, that's also a very common mistake. If you slightly know about it, but you mention it in the resume, mm. it's easy. I mean, it, it's very easy to get you, you know? Yeah. But uh, yeah. Vinoj, Min, what do you think like about yeah. the, what could, so what could be improved? What could be improved? Yep, exactly. Um, so uh, I think what could be improved is um, in uh, asking more about like what you're seeking to learn, right? Mm. It, um, uh, what I wanted to hear was a little bit more specificity as okay. to the answers, right? So what I, 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 you started with the user problem. I want to build a complex interface. Cool. Awesome, great. Um, now, what kind of technologies would you define as a complex interface, right? So mm -hmm. what are some other, so you said Facebook, right? So what are all the tools that you can read about on online, on Free Code Camp, on Medium, on wherever, about blo on blogs and go, whoa, they're using these tech um, uh, tools. Do I wanna try something that at least tries a couple of these? Right. Okay. So from doing that, you have like, this is my three month plan. This is my six month plan. Okay. I want to get these things going. And that'll be like for, you know, someone like me, like, whoa, this person really knows what their direction is and how to be that best front end engineer they can be. Okay, cool. Hmm. Yeah, 
for for my feedback, things that you can uh, look to improve. Uh, you mentioned a lot of the projects that you worked on. The issue is in today's world, everyone has a lot of different projects. And the problem is there's a lot of tutorials out there as well that will set up some pretty sophisticated looking projects, right? Mm -hmm. So one way that you can uh, show actual uh, differentiation with your work is to mention outcomes. Uh, mention who is using it, how, how they're reacting to it. Um, Honestly, you, when you started to talk about your pre previous experience with the construction company, that was one of the highlights because that really shows where your character is coming through in a very specific situation. Not every candidate will have that, right? But almost every candidate will have some kind of relatively complicated uh, tech technical project. Okay. Um, kind of along those lines, there's elements of your, uh, I call it uh, the person's story, that are, are very, very compelling. Um, like you working, uh, uh, sorry, like you coming from a mechanical engineering background, like you working with uh, actual clients and building software for them, those are the elements of your story that are really, really important to, to, um, to talk about. I felt like you had a lot to say when it came to like specific technologies, I noticed you were you were trying to drop a lot of technologies and a lot of uh, frameworks. While that's good, and that can that can kind of try to establish yourself as someone who is very technical, who knows a lot of technologies. The purpose of like these types of interviews that aren't strictly looking for that, they're looking for your personality and mm -hmm. the kind of person that you would be working with, right? So you can mention a few of those, but don't forget the other side of your story where you're doing other things, you're working with real people, building software in real situations, you know? Okay, cool. So. We'll do. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, you are a very courage person to be number one. <laughs> <laughs> it is always, yeah, shout out for that. Uh, thank you very much. So you can stop sharing the screen. And before moving to candidate number two, I want to explain one more time how to participate as a candidate in our mock interview sessions because I see a lot of people uh, get confused, I guess. So in order to participate in the meetup page, it states that you have to fill out the, first, you have to fill out the Google form, but it's not enough. After you fill out the Google form, you have to sign up to the Slack channel and every other Wednesday, we do uh, onboarding session. Onboarding session, this is basically we discuss all logistics. And this is kind of the first round of not the interview, but uh, our kind of filtering system because we have a lot of people who want to participate in that. And we just want to make sure that if you are committed, so you, we, we're expecting you that you will show up, right? Because we got... Some people, they committed, but they <laughs> didn't uh, in the last time they uh, drop. So we want to make sure that you will be here. And this is why you need to be in the onboarding sessions, uh, which we do every other Wednesday. Uh, ask I Irina. She will, uh, if, if you have questions, you please uh, join to the Slack channel and drop the questions towards like uh, about the logistics and how to participate if it's not still clear. Um, yeah, just keep it, keep it in mind. We just started, this is non-commercial project. Uh, so yeah, don't be mad if you get confused, all right? Uh, so if you guys, again, right now who are participants who already uh, did this, all the, those three steps, they were on the onboarding sessions and that's why they will be participating. Uh, today is not for randomly choosing uh, people, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, candidate number two, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Hello, I'm candidate number two. And I'm a certified full stack web developer with a degree in management of information systems and business analytics. I'm transitioning from a career in bookkeeping and accounting and office management. And I'm beginning my journey into a more technical role in software development. 
uh, back in 2014, I decided that to get further than just a bookkeeper or office manager, I was going to need to get a college education. As I was pursuing my degree in accounting, I had to take a uh, more and more classes that were looking uh, along the technical side. And I discovered that I wasn't interested in the accounting laws as much as I was the data itself. So I transferred over to a degree in the management of information systems and business analytics to get closer to that data movement. I finished out my degree and discovered that I absolutely love working in SQL and learning about data systems, especially cloud computing. So when I finished my degree in April, COVID hit, so I decided don't waste any time, use it as an opportunity, and I shifted quickly into a full stack uh, web development program. It was a 12-week boot camp through a local university, and I continued learning about moving data all the way from the client to the server and then watching how that data is transferred and exchanged between the two and uh, learned a lot and it was a great experience. I gained hands-on knowledge uh, building full stack web applications, uh, mainly in the Mern stack using uh, MySQL, JavaScript, Node, Express, and React. And now I'm ready for my next step in the journey, which is to build on this foundation of skills. I want to bring back in some of my data skills where I was using SAS, R, and Python. Uh, Python was kind of completely foreign to me because being an online degree program, it was very hard to get that concept of object oriented programming. So now that I've kind of gotten my teeth into JavaScript, I'm going to go back to Python and get that mastered because I totally see that as being a great way to move data around uh, server side. Um, so then I'm hoping that my next challenge is going to be uh, taking this full stack and learning how to apply that to a more uh, cloud focused data system. For my last project, I was one of four team members and we developed a recipe sharing app. Uh, it was a MERN stack. We used uh, React on the front end, uh, JavaScript on both front and back end. We used node libraries, uh, including an express server, SQLize ORM, and then we used MySQL for the back end database. <clears throat> Excuse me. My responsibilities were mainly on server side. I developed the MySQL database, and I wanted to share with you here the ERD that I developed. Uh, as you can see, it had lots of many-to-many -many joins, which at the time I did not realize what a challenge that was going to be using SQLize ORM. So that was an eye-opener, and I will double-think that from here forward to make sure that I'm ready and sane enough to tackle that one again. But it was great. I did learn a lot. I had a lot of support from my instructors and uh, tutors and teaching assistants and learning assistants and I reached out for help everywhere I could get it to to really get my my head wrapped around SQLize and how to transition that SQL query into a SQLize controller and that was a learning experience that I completely value because being able to change out your back end with just one line of code going, I don't want to use my SQL anymore. I want to use Postgres or I want to use Oracle DB and not having to rewrite my app. What I could see the value in that. That was just amazing. So um, I developed the SQL, um, the SQL ERD, shared that with my team and we made sure that it was going to discuss everything. The shopping list and the reviews ended up becoming icebox features where we just used the user table, the recipe table, categories and ingredients, and then had the SQLize uh, join tables, which were more virtual models. And going back to the project itself, I was responsible for the uh, creating the table models, uh, which was the many to many associations. I developed API routes uh, using the SQLize controllers. Uh, one thing I found helpful for the team was to create a text file within the project, which was used to communicate what the route was and what data it would return. The one thing that I wish I'd added to this project was being able to 
document what data object itself was returned. So that way they could see the actual data object. So that's something I'm looking forward to adding into my next project where I have a front end and a back end team. Um, I, I, once I got the uh, back end finished, which only took me about three or four days to get that wrapped up, I started helping out the front end with our project because we only had a week and a half to get this project completed. So I helped them with building React components. I built some buttons. I helped with uh, doing some styling, finding some graphics, you know, where I could, and, and just doing some overall troubleshooting to make sure the data was coming through good. And we did not get through to all of our icebox. We actually finished up the reviews after graduation uh, for our demo day. We were able to get that review finished up. Uh, so users could go in, they could save their recipes, they could share recipes with the community. Um, you could uh, place a review on a recipe to warn others if something wasn't quite right. I'm sorry. Or you could uh, also, you know, be able to leave a great recipe review saying, hey, you know, this was great. Yeah, let's drop it up. Um, let's do with the uh, follow-up questions, guys. Right. Uh, shall I start then? Um, yeah. Uh, so th thanks uh, for presenting the project and um, yourself. That's uh, that was um, yeah really really interesting uh, journey uh, explained. I I'd, I'd like to ask um, what you what do you feel is going to be your route uh, in the next uh, next I don't know um, half a year let's say. Uh, what I heard uh, you uh, in the last project you've been focused mostly on uh, SQL side. Uh, so how confident you feel in a JavaScript or maybe you want to switch to something else you mentioned Python. Uh, yeah, so a, a bit vague question, I understand, but uh, yeah, Ho hope, uh, hope it, uh, it's understandable. So short term, I'd like to revisit the Python because I've had that before, but I didn't feel confident in that. So I want to revisit that. I'm pro probably not going to focus on the SAS and R quite as heavily. I do want to review over those because those are still important. But probably after I finish the Python in a few months, I'm going to be focusing, once I get that job to where I can actually pay for, you know, get a little more training, I want to focus on getting a cloud practitioner certification from AWS. Um, and I would also like to look at uh, the Microsoft Azure platform uh, because that's used um, quite heavily as well on the enterprise level. Um, while Google's a hot commodity right now, it, they don't have the market share that AWS and Azure have uh, for cloud uh, development. So I figured that those two would probably be my first targets uh, for my next certifications. All right, thanks. Awesome. Uh, I guess I'll go next. Um, uh, candidate 2HS, <laughs> you mentioned that you were looking for a lot of people to get a lot of help with your project and to, to learn from. How do you find people that you can learn from? I have joined a lot of meetup groups, uh, especially now with COVID going on. All of my networking has been virtual. Uh, I actually did my college degree and my boot camp completely virtual. And I have just continued with that theme in finding uh, meetup groups, finding through uh, college alumni groups, and just keep expanding through LinkedIn and, you know, anywhere I can reach out and learn from somebody, it's, there's always something to learn. And if I can learn it now, that's better, you know, for my products and bringing value to a company later. So I hope that I'll just be a lifelong learner and just keep learning and growing as time goes on. Cool. Uh, quick follow on to that. So what are the, what, what are some qualities that you're looking for, for that tell you someone is good to learn from? Um, being able to help me when I, like when I ask a question that's more technical, um, being able to break that down into smaller bite-sized pieces that always helps with being able to digest the information and go okay now that you've given me this tidbit can i ask you another question you know and then just keep building on that question and just build a dialogue around it so that way you have 
real life examples and you can uh, discuss not just the technical theoretical view of something, but also just a nuts and bolts. This is how it looks in the real world. And I'm really looking forward to getting that professional experience because while I have plenty of nuts and bolts from the theoretical academic side, I'd love to be able to see how this team behaves in a real agile environment and how it behaves in, you know, how does the sprint work, you know, as, as an actual day-to-day feel, not just the book theory of this is what you should do, but how do you make that happen? And how do you work as a team to pull that together so you're a productive team? Great. Um, uh, a follow-up question I have is, so um, to flip Min's question the other way, right? So I think in your um, uh, resume, you've got like you assist students of varying skills with code activities, homework. So the other question is, how do you, what, what are, what's an example of someone you are working with who are like, hey, Canada to HS, I need some help on this concept. Um, uh, how did you break it down for them in a way that they were able to learn? Because there are so many different learning styles. How did you mentor someone? Uh, one of the recent things that I did was actually um, shared how to look at SQL joins because the students in our class struggled with the idea of joins. It just sounded really foreign to them. It had a lot of technical terms. So the way that I approached it was just saying, hey, are you guys familiar with spreadsheets? Right. And okay. So each table is a spreadsheet tab. And in each tab, you're going to reference your, your primary key. All that means is just that's the ID for that row. And then we're mm-hmm. going to take that ID over into this row. And it's not the ID for this row. It's a foreign key now because the foreign key doesn't really belong here. It just references back to the other, uh, to the other spreadsheet tab. So that while they sound really complicated terms, it's really a very basic idea of just being able to link your information together from one sheet to the next so you can keep track. So how about the, the extension of that? Is there someone you were trying to help and it just wasn't getting through, right? Like you, you sort of failed at mentoring someone. Can you give me an example of a time you failed at that? Um, during that same class, actually, I'm still trying to work with a couple of them. <laughs> that you go. just try to take it in a different way and you start talking about, okay, well, um, what about looking at your customer bill? You have a customer number and you have an yeah. invoice, you know, and on your invoice, you have your customer number linked there, but that doesn't have all of your customer information, that customer information sitting on a customer table. So when they, you know, the company is going to see you in two different places, they're going to see your billing invoice in this table with your customer ID, and they're going to see you as a customer over in the customer table. And then that being able to break that customer information away from your invoice is what protects your personal data. So that way that's not shared with anybody that shouldn't see it over in the billing department. They don't need to see where you live, where, what your social is and all that kind of stuff. That's for the accounting department that's locked away in a vault. And this is just for the billing invoices, or this is just for your service ticket, you know? So trying to use real life examples to demonstrate the use of that code is, is what's going to make it easier for somebody to make those connections. I have a follow-up, but I think Min has one too. So I'll wait for Min to go first. Oh, you know, it, it, I think it's okay. Vinoj, why don't you, why don't you go ahead? Oh, okay. All right. Um, so one thing you, you're, you're, you seem to be pretty passionate about is this idea of like data. And you've mentioned that a few times today. Yeah. Um, as you're working with like, you know, in, in your experience here on the drink app school app, recipe app, you have backend, backend, backend. Right. And uh, and you said that at one point you also did some front end. Um, what is that sort of collaboration? Because there's innately this data contract between how back end and front end should work. Right. Like, right. hey, I'll give you this data. You take this data. And they're like, ah, actually, I need my drop down to do this other thing. Also, can you. Right. Can you give an example of a time when like someone on the front end said, like, can you help me change the data? Because I can't um, I can't get this drop down to populate correctly. Something like that. 
Right. So with the recipe app, the last one, that was probably the most complex one. And I thought I had all the roots covered and then they would change something on the front end and go, Hey, we want to hit this in one call. And I'd be like, okay. So then uh -huh. I have to go back and go, okay, I want to, do I need to make two separate calls within this route to my database, but then I don't want to hit my database that many times. So then I started doing these many to many joins to where I'm making these gigantic data objects. Right. And then have to pare those down with uh -uh. stating the association to where it limits those columns to right. where I'm only, where I'm getting a more manageable data, <laughs> data object on the, back, exactly. on the front. So uh -huh. it, it got pretty complex, but it was fun. Awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah. I, I've got another question that kind of uh, follows along, um, but uh, Alex, I, I feel like, did you have something you wanted to add? You're good? Okay. Yeah. So uh, candidate to HS, I'd like to kind of follow along in that thread. What's, uh, uh, what's something that a teammate has said you could work on? Um, my front end. <laughs> <laughs> I am not the most creative of people when it comes to the front end. Uh, I struggle no, with CSS. Um, you, I can manipulate the DOM. I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, I can do a pretty decent front end, but you can tell it was not done by a front end master <laughs> at all. Uh, so I was known in my, in my cohort going through the bootcamp, I was known as the readme queen and the SQL guru because I was very good at documentation uh, doing the online uh, college, I did a lot of paper writing. So it was just very natural for me to fall right into documenting our projects. Uh, learned how to build really cool uh, Giphys. Uh, actually oh. uh, use screen to GIF um, and make Giphys for my projects. Uh, cutting yes. out a lot of dead screens and stuff like that. And uh, now I've stumbled onto OBS Studio. So now I'm really getting fun with the Giphys. <laughs> what is that? I want to know what that is. <laughs> it's just another type of screen recorder. So it um, just gives you on a lot it, more yeah, this is my Saturday, I guess. Edit cool. your recordings. <laughs> nice. Oh, I love that. I, you know, there, there's been a theme of uh, of the, some of the things that you've been talking about. Uh, I see you as somebody who stepped in into a lot of roles uh, through this project. I'm kind of curious. How did you determine what the team needed most at any given point? Uh, with each of the projects, we used, used the Kanban, and that helped a lot with seeing who was struggling, who was, who was needing help. We did uh, stand-ups every day, uh, talked about uh, my first two groups were with the Drink app and the School app were all girl teams. So it was real easy for us to be supportive of each other and say, hey, who's struggling, who needs help? Uh, a lot of times we would divide up tasks on who needs to go uh, research a solution to this. Uh, with the recipe app, I was actually the only girl on the team and the only one working on the back end. <laughs> so um, it was it was actually kind of funny for me to um, work with the guys and, and see how they were just a little bit different uh, in how they approach things. And they might not be as willing to admit they need the help, but that's okay. Um, that it, you know, the Kanban shows and, you know, being able to just be able to say, Hey, can I, I've got a few minutes. Can I help you go look for an answer to this? What's your roadblock? How can I help you solve this? You know, but the Kanban awesome. was great. <laughs> awesome. Should we move on to feedback or do we, if we have another minute, I've got one last follow on. <laughs> we have a couple more minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay, we do have a good, sorry, I, I, uh, no, no, my, no, timer no. Must, my timer must be off. Um, that's excellent, because I would like to know, um, I lost my train of thought. But we can move to the feedback. <laughs> I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. That's fine. All right, let's, um, Alex, you want to add something, or you want to do feedback? Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure if uh, that's um, a valid question, but uh, I just wanted to ask uh, your candidate too. Like, uh, what do you what do you need to uh, to write your new awesome API on the backend? What uh, what will you start with? Um, probably 
for me, I would, I would probably go to my go-to with sequel. I would want to pick a flavor of sequel um, because it's comfortable and it's expandable and I can keep it granular. Um, with Mongo, it has its applications. It was fun to work with, but a lot of data still needs that relational structure. So I, you know, I probably would go to that just because it is what's comfortable, especially while I'm still learning. Right. Thanks. Okay. Is it what you want to hear, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> Did yeah, I not answer matter, your right? question, for, you know, as far as what you were looking for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me, myself, also new to, uh, to APIs, so I'm, I'm just curious what the um, other candidates are answering for that. <laughs> so I'm learning as well. <laughs> I love it. It's, it's, it's my jam. I love SQL. SQL's great. <laughs> okay, let's do feedback then. Uh, what guys went well? on your opinion? Yeah, I can um, go first then. Um, in terms of, I, I actually think your resume is excellent. Um, and the reason why the resume to me jumped out was um, there's, um, uh, Min called it your story, I think kinda, um, earlier today. Um, your story is very clear. You sort of, uh, with what I see on the resume, it's that you come into a place, uh, you kind of see what's going on, and then you go, how can I help, right? Like, where, where can I find a place that I can? And then the team sort of like coalesces and goes, yeah, hey, can you also do these other things? Like, that'd be great, right? <laughs> like, and that's actually a, a strong sign uh, that I, as a hiring manager, would like to see right, is that the person is able to take on a bunch of responsibilities and move forward. Um, I also liked that um, uh, you, you pretty much know what you want to do. You want to be a back-end developer, and that's cool, <laughs> right? Um, um, and while I also really appreciated you're like, yeah, I'm really not the front-end person. You, you don't want to see my CSS, right? Um, being able to know your own weakness is actually one of the best strengths. So that's my feedback. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll go next. Um, uh, exactly like Vinod said, I think uh, just to kind of uh, plus one a couple of those elements, you demonstrated uh, a couple of qualities that's actually very hard to ask for. And, uh, and I think like in a lot of interviews, people can ask different questions and they don't necessarily hit on it. You demonstrated teamwork. That's a very, uh, that's a very, very highly desired skill and you demonstrated a sense of like being supportive to your team. That's also really hard to demonstrate, but a lot of your answers, a lot of how you talked about your team interactions, they, they put you in that, uh, in, in, that kind of, uh, in that kind of light. It's very positive. Uh, it also showed initiative. So I remembered the question that I was going to ask. Uh, it, it was going to be around like, I wanted to know how you specifically contributed to your team, to that team dynamic, right? You mentioned that the all girls group was very supportive and you guys always knew what was most important. I wanted to know how you specifically contributed to that atmosphere because it doesn't come automatically. You know, those, those elements of building a team culture is, is actually uh, very, very difficult, right? And I felt like you had a lot of very positive things that contributed to that. Um, I would have loved to have he heard even more about that. That would have made me very excited as a hiring manager to bring you on. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Alex, do you have any feedback? Uh, yeah. Um, again, not much. But um, yeah, I also felt like um, uh, you're a quite intelligent person and with a lot of experience in the background. So uh, my advice, more, more like advice would be to, uh, to find, I think uh, you, you said already that you kind of feel uh, more patient about backend than SQL. Uh, yeah, so my advice would be to just focus on that uh, on that area and um, uh, keep uh, developing yourself uh, in this direction. So that uh, would be uh, the, uh, yeah, the most, uh, the most impact in your career in the future. What could be improved, guys? Um, yeah, so um, f for this interview, I felt that initial part was really long. Um, the sort of like, I did this, 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 right? Um, and, uh, and while I, I totally get the like, I want to make sure that you really understand everything I've done, right? Um, I wanted to hear less 
because the opportunity there is for some, someone to sort of get a taste of it and then go, wait, what was that? Well, let me dig deeper into that part, right? That's what you want to build um, more than like, here's everything and now we have no questions, right? Um, so that was a piece that I thought could be improved is that initial like, maybe tell me about yourself piece. Um, and also I, I put on my notes as like, you said certified web developer, but I don't know what that means. I don't know whose certification Right, like I, I, so, um, I would drop that phrase, right? Um, in future interviews, is because initially I was like, "Wait, what?" And meanwhile, I was like, "Wait, hold on, I got to write notes," and it it took me off track for a bit. So that's what I would uh, recommend as improving. And then, why I'm I'm not a certified web developer, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't get that. I was like, wait, am I certified? Oh my god. I'm like, oh. Yeah. I was like, oh no. Yeah. I'm a fraud. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Awesome. Me and yeah. your side? Uh yeah. Uh, a couple of other things uh I thought that you, you can improve. Um similar to uh again, I'm I'm always just gonna keep bouncing off of Vinoj's uh <laughs> comments. I think that when you when you spend too much time trying to talk about how technical you are. What you do is you, you focus on arguably the, the least important parts, right? And what you can do is you can set yourself up into traps, right? Uh, managers and engineers who've worked a really, really long time, we hear how technology is talked about and certain phrases, certain um, just wordings can clue us in as to how technical uh, how much experience you have, right? That's not to say that you're not a technical person. Everybody is by virtue that they chose this path. They, they have what went and learned the skills, right? But so, <clears throat> excuse me, but so spending a lot of time talking about your technical or, or trying to convince us that you are technical may actually backfire a bit, you know? I would limit it to these are the things that I really, really like. These are the technologies that I've had experience with. Let me tell you about the projects. And then let me tell you about, again, outcomes, right? Uh, I think you, you had a very, very good uh, story to tell around the team that built your projects, uh, the team that you worked with. Uh, I would spend a lot more emphasis on those pieces, right? And you can even, you can even throw in tidbits there about like how uh, things didn't go as you expected, but you were able to persevere, you know, nuggets like that. Awesome, awesome. Alex, you want to input something? Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, actually, um, yeah, for, for me, it's, uh, it's, it's a bit uh, difficult to, uh, to give feedback on that. Uh, it's like uh, maybe something that, uh, uh, that sounds uh, or looks a little um, different to me is that uh, the number of projects right, uh, you, that we see in a CV, um, I think it's good that it's focusing us on uh, what you what you uh, feel important uh, for, for this interview. Uh, but uh, to me, it it looks uh, yeah the, the least experience in your career. So um, yeah, I, I would not maybe yeah either either uh, either to have it uh, on the same on, on the same degree as other uh, other projects or something like that. But um, um, I actually like the part that you started with the SQL. Uh, so it's it's, it's not uh, in, in something for improvement, but uh, that what um, that what touched me uh, in the beginning. So yeah, that's my uh, little feedback. Okay, All right. Thank you. All right, thank you, candidate number two. Uh, thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Let's move with the candidate number three. Before uh, moving candidate number three, I got a question over there. Like, are you guys hiring? Uh, or like, will you guys hire uh, candidates who is participating here? So uh, let me um, remind what is the purpose of today's session. So today's session is purpose, like mock interview. So mock interview is basically the, the training to practicing with the interviews and to get the feedback. If you go to the real interview, uh, like 99% that you won't get any feedback from the managers, um, it's, it's less likely. But uh, here we can give you the honest, as much honest as we can provide the feedback, obviously. And that's the main purpose. However, however, 
all managers and um, all managers, they are, uh, they are all um, maybe, maybe not today, but they are hiring uh, once in a while. And I'm not sure like about Vinod, I mean, are you hiring at this moment or not? But for example, on the previous mock interview session, uh, all four candidates were invited to the real interview, to the real interview, all four, the, all, of, all of them. Um, the previous three mock interview sessions, only one candidate was invited to the real interview after the, um, after the uh, mock interviews. All right, so we not guarantee definitely, uh, but keep it in mind that even if it is a mock interview, you don't do mock interview with the, your body. You do your this mock interview with the real hiring managers, and that means that if they like you, this is potential that they will invite you to the the real interview, and this is obviously potential um, opportunity to get to get hired. Right, don't take it, but don't take it right now. Oh, you guys, are you guys hiring right now? I mean, if you're just looking for that, it's probably it should be useful anyway. It should be useful anyway, but if you don't know, if you don't see it um, beneficial for you, that's another question. All right, okay, let's move with the candidate number three, A Y. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Okay, give me one second. I'll put the timer. Um, right. So please tell us about yourself. Yeah, um, I've been very passionate about building applications. Um, I kind of started learning software at a young age. Um, I remembered uh, when I first borrowed my JavaScript book, uh, the first one, um, and it was written by O'Reilly. Um, and that was during the Netscape and Internet Explorer days. Um, and during that time, I kind of tinkered with the alert, confirm, and prompt boxes. Um, and then from there on, I kind of fell in love with programming. Um, I, I turned my hobby into a career. Um, for the last seven years, professionally, I gained the full experience of building web applications from front end, back end, databases, as well as DevOps. Um, I'm kind of advanced in the front end. Um, I've, I've been uh, designing UI with Figma as well as Photoshop, um, but, uh, but also um, programming with JavaScript, uh, creating features in React, Redux, Webpack, um, as well as making those features um, or websites mobile responsive, as well as pic uh, translated to pixel perfect. Um, I'm intermediate in the back end, uh, worked with PHP, SQL queries, building schemas, uh, as well as Node, Node.js, and interfacing with many APIs. Um, on the DevOps side, um, I have uh, worked with Ubuntu and AWX Linux, um, Docker, uh, Nginx, um, as well as uh, AWS EC2, um, and CI CD tools. Um, and lastly, I've worked with, um, on the testing side, um, I've written tests, end-to-end uh, -end tests with Selenium, um, as well as working with uh, unit and integration testing with React testing library and Just. Um, and that's a little bit about me. Okay, let's move with the project. Like, can you tell about your recent uh, project or company where you work? Yes, um, at my previous, uh, at company one, uh, which was my previous role, um, it was a membership and um, membership management and billing software as a service. Um, and there, uh, it was a small startup and I wore several hats. Uh, one of my main responsibilities there was um, to lead the front end migration of the legacy software. Um, so I had rebuilt their application into React um, uh, React and Redux into a single page application. Um, and another, uh, another one of my responsibilities was to develop customized front end, front end features as well as components. Um, and I also maintained the back end working with PHP, Node, AWS, and SQL. Um, on the DevOps side, I did work with 
Docker, Nginx, and CICD, to, CICD tools. Um, and I also wrote tests uh, with Selenium just as well. Guys, your turn. Awesome. Um, oh, uh, Alex, you want to go? Uh, yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for that. Um, um, yeah, actually, this uh, this looks uh, much more familiar to me. Uh, that uh, looks like um, the resume that I uh, usually see. Um, but uh, that's maybe my background. Uh, so um, yeah, I'm, I was uh, wondering, like, uh, uh, in the last project, you started the migration. I'm, I'm just curious how how you implement this migration? Are you more for revolutional or evolutional way of uh, migrating the legacy? Yes. Um, so uh, when I when I did join, um, it was just to kind of spike the single page application. Um, since we did have a lot of features um, in the legacy software, um, we did have to kind of move over one, uh, some of the features one at a time. Um, the way that I wanted it to be developed was that I wanted to set it up with Next.js um, because it has an easy setup time and everything's already bundled, um, including, including like Webpack, Babel, um, and other features um, like SaaS. Um, but the company wanted uh, to kind of have ownership of the code as well as insight. Um, so I did have to kind of rebuild uh, the application from scratch with React, uh, Redux, and React Router, um, as well as implementing the Webpack and bundling um, the code base. Um, so that's kind of, um, I guess that's how I kind of uh, led the front end migration of the software in terms of front end. Okay. Um, and so uh, I'll continue with Alex's question. Uh, I think it's an awesome one. Um, uh, as you were doing that migration, what was your strategy for migrating your state in Redux, right? How did you make sure that your state wasn't sort of leaking as you're going over from side to side? Um, well, what I remember was um, in terms of, uh, I guess in terms of if it was leaking or not, um, uh, I'm not too sure um, how I would explain it, but in terms of just um, abstracting um, different things that I needed, I, I do know that um, it, it's the web client. So I do need, um, I guess the auth authentication layer, um, such as um, the, I guess the JWT token that you do need to, um, uh, have on the client side so that you can um, request it from the server and kind of um, uh, save that data on the local storage. Um, so that was one thing that I had in, uh, kept in mind was um, authentication later, layer. Um, there was also um, the sidebar, uh, which included um, uh, the I guess the navigation. Um, some things uh, it would have it would have um, basic uh, tabs such as like customer um, uh, customer reports um, apps and like the dashboard. Um, but some things uh, because the sidebar is used uh, globally throughout um, all the pages um, in within the app, uh, the dashboard or application. Um, it's something that I also needed to keep state of. Um, so that was another thing that, um, I had to keep, uh, in mind in, in terms of translating the Redux state, um, as well as the company's, um, name, um, and I guess, uh, that would also be displayed on the nav bar on the top, um, and also, uh, user data, um, just basic user data, like the company's, uh, title, uh, or title, uh, name, um, and uh, what else? Um, yeah, that's uh, basically kind of uh, what I kind of had um, thought about um, in terms of the state for Redux, in terms of translating, just the basic part of it. Uh, kind of a uh, kind of a bit of a follow on on that. Uh, how did you measure the success of this migration or this project? Um, that's a very good question. Um, and I, 
to be honest, I didn't really uh, measure the success of, of it. Um, at the time, I just uh, wanted to make sure that everything worked um, in terms of just being able to um, just being able to have the very basic functionalities in terms of the MVP. Um, so as long as uh, the sidebar uh, works and some of the, like, I guess some of the main pages like the dashboard, um, as long as uh, that worked um, and then because it was, it was just, um, because it, it was uh, just, it was also integrated as part of the old legacy software. The links um, that are in the sidebar um, also has to go to the old legacy software. So I guess that's another um, measure that I, I needed to make sure it works. Yeah. Did, did you work with uh, uh, other either team members, maybe cross-functionally that helped clue you into what those needs were? Um, yeah, um, so there were the co-founders um, that um, also uh, two of them did kind of uh, build the legacy software. So it was just making sure, uh, working with them to make sure um, that the functionality in terms of uh, the migration in React works uh, well with the old legacy, legacy software. Um, and I also uh, had uh, two team members uh, that were the backend developers. Um, so just making sure, uh, communicating with them, oh, okay, the, uh, is the login uh, or authentication working? Um, are, am I able to grab uh, the correct data? And if not, um, can I uh, ask them to kind of uh, change some of the things on the back end to receive that data or kind of do it myself? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Was there something maybe helping you in, in this um, migration? I guess all the questions about the migration, mm -hmm. uh, like a, a set of uh, tests maybe, uh, or uh, requirements uh, document or uh, anything, or it was like a verbal communication with uh, co-founders? Um, it was uh, mainly uh, communication through Slack or um, if it's in the, in the office in person. Um, I didn't really document it um, in terms of just uh, the migration itself, but the features um, that I did migrate, um, I did have to document. I did have to document that. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, that's all I could say for right now. Cool. Uh, I've got a kind of a different question, different um, wavelength yes. of it. So uh, are you familiar with uh, time, cost, and features? You only, you, all, you only get to pick two. Are you familiar with that saying? Um, I'm not familiar with that saying, but I think I understand a little bit of it. Yeah. So yes. the, the, uh, the broad premise is just that in any, any type of work that you do, you get right. uh, any type of projects that you do, there's three things that you can do. There's the, the do it on time, do it for a controllable cost or have all the features that you want, right? You can only pick two. That's yep. the, the basis of it, right? My question is like, what things do you consider when you're trying to prioritize related to those three? Um, what, what do I consider, you said? Yeah. What, what, um, what things do you consider? What uh, considerations do you take? Well, um, because it... Uh, is if it's within a company and I'm in that role, um, mm -hmm. it would have to be um, cost as well as time. Um, so usually, um, usually I'll kind of go over um, with the, I guess we'll have um, sprint planning um, and then we'll kind of go over as a team, like, okay, how much is this task going to take? And then we estimate it. Um, and then if that time is a little bit too long, um, kind of work with uh, the CEO or uh, the product owner um, to see if we can kind of uh, create something that's just the very basic um, MVP or just kind of like a wireframe um, and kind of create those features uh, and make a prototype. Um, and then um, as as we create the the prototype, we could, we could go back and forth uh, with a product owner to see, okay, 
um, this is on schedule. Um, if this is something that might take longer, okay, we might not need it at that time. Um, so that's, um, I would c really consider um, the, the time aspect of it because um, the time aspect um, is a huge part of the cost itself. Um, but there's also other parts of the cost as well, like, um, I guess, like, stuff on, like, Amazon, uh, AWS, um, but just in terms of, like, creating features, um, that's one of the things that I would consider. Cool, thank you. Yeah. Um, one question, I, I just one, uh, which is sort of like, um, you know, uh, working in tech, like, mistakes happen all the time. Right and like bugs happen all the time, failures yes. happen all the time. What's like the biggest screw up you've ever had? And like the bigger the better. It can't be like oh there was a bug and then I fixed the bug. It was like, yo, it was a big screw up, <laughs> right? Everyone's like, dude, did you do that? Yeah. It was and, me. And, and I was fired, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not that, but like yes. yeah, uh, um, most egg on your face. The most. The most egg on my face was actually something that I had to do in terms of um, when I had uh, barely joined the company, um, I had to um, create, because it was the old legacy software had, uh, a, I guess, an older layout. Um, and when we, when we did, uh, when I did uh, create the new, uh, I guess, the left sliding um, sidebar with the nav on top, um, what didn't work was uh, some of the links um, that were on the left sidebar. Um, so I guess what I did wrong or what I did, what I uh, lacked in doing was I should have wrote tests. Um, and that's uh, one of the, and it was pushed to production. So um, that was a pretty big screw up. And we kind of um, had to uh, make changes quickly um, and kind of, um, uh, I guess, um, create like the branch and then uh, if the branch is good, then push it to production. Um, but it did affect uh, uh, several, I guess, uh, the, the customers that were on um, the site at the time. Um, so that was a big lesson that I learned is just you got to write tests. Um, so ever since then, I have been writing tests. Um, yeah. That's a good lesson. Yeah. That's a <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Do, do you think there were other elements of the environment that kind of led to yeah. that? Yeah, um, actually, um, everything was working perfectly fine um, on dev uh, or on local on dev and then staging. But for some reason, um, something wasn't it wasn't working on production. Um, so that was another thing that I had to figure out. Um, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it also had to do with the environment as well. Awesome, I love that, yeah. So did you end up, uh, did you end up following up with that and uh, implementing any kind of change to the, the environment? Um, like I said, I don't really remember exactly uh, what I did to fix it. It might have to, had to do with um, certain flags um, within uh, the sidebar or uh, maybe, the data on the production uh, was sent a different way. Um, but that, in terms of just uh, the environment, that's all I can remember uh, right now. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe one more from, from my side. Uh, what, you, what the kind of position you're looking for? Is that uh, something related to what you've been doing in the last project, or you want to be more? Um, tied to some, uh, some, some specific technology. Like you mentioned, you've been uh, uh, doing many stuff on front end, on back end, uh, also on the CI, CD. Maybe, maybe you've chosen one of, the, of those directions at least. Yes, um, I'm pretty, I feel like my strengths are in front end, um, but I'm kind of intermediate on the back end. So I would actually like a position that, um, well, allow me to um, grow um, in the back end and understand um, that I do have a lot to learn. Um, because in my last position, um, they're, uh, they're working uh, with an architecture called uh, domain-driven design, and I didn't really understand it. 
Um, I do know uh, MVC, like model view controller. Um, so just basically, um, I would like to uh, learn, uh, be able to uh, be in a position uh, where I would be able to collaborate with more engineers, um, work on the back end, as well as being able to um, Im make impact on, um, I guess, like on the development operation side as well. Um, I uh, so basically being able to work um, with collaborate with more engineers and being able to work full stack. Okay, guys, let's move with the feedback. Mm, let's wrap it up to what I'll get first. Okay, um, I'll go first. Um, I, um, uh, I really like the, I, I know we spent a lot of time on the migration <laughs> just as a, mm -hmm. as a group here, but um, it was really interesting to hear about the strategy there um, uh, because it's a real world problem and this happens at um, at least every company I've worked at, that there's some old code, we got to uh, port it over to some new code. So I liked your explanation of like the challenges you faced and how you tried to get through it. Thank you. Yeah, uh, something I'll add to it, uh, since you know we had been talking about resumes, for everyone watching, uh, if you look at his resume, the skills section, I wanna call something out very specifically. Most of the other resumes that we see, and generally speaking for more junior resumes, you'll notice all of the skills and technologies, they just get munged together into a big fat blob, right? But what Candidate 3 has done here is he's broken them out into high level categories or ideas, right? Concepts. You have languages, you have front end, back end, uh, database, testing, DevOps, design. By, sh by communicating the skills that you know in categories like that, you're showing that you understand innately these concepts have different, uh, they belong in different buckets, right? So that's a very subtle, but a hint when I'm looking at a resume to know that somebody is a little bit more experienced versus someone else, you know? Just a quick uh, call out. I, I thought that that, that uh, was very well done. Thank you. Uh, for me, the most, um, uh, the most, uh, the biggest, um... Um, the, the best part of, of, of the interview was uh, your honesty, I guess, it was um, uh, a good answer in the migration. Like, I think there were at least three or four questions regarding that. Uh, so thanks for explaining what, uh, what was uh, the way you've chosen for, for that and uh, how you worked on the last project. Um, yeah. Thank and you. you think can be improved? What do you guys think? Yeah, um, the, there was a part where uh, the candidate spoke about Next.js and the benefits of it. Um, sometimes as you're, you know, it, it's, it's um, very common for us to go, it has these new features. We like these things of Next.js. The thing that can really set you apart is how it helps your organization and more fundamentally how it can help your business, right? So if Next.js can actually help reduce the deploy time, the build time, the, you know, and if you're looking at it from that, that it helps make your um, sort of case stronger. So I would have liked to see it a little bit more as to like, how does it help your business by switching to something like Next.js? Yeah, I agree with everything Vinaj says there. Uh, I seem to agree with everything he says in all of these sessions. <laughs> the, if you, uh, for those that are watching, if you noticed, we started asking very different questions here, right? Because obviously through the resume, uh, candidate three, you have a lot more experience and the ball game changes, right? It's yeah. not about a learning attitude about being a, uh, it's not only about being a, a, a technical person, but instead there's an emphasis on how you are applying that to the context of a business, right? Yes. You need to ha start having an understanding of how your choices, how your technical choices actually provide value to a business. So the questions start to, to sound very, very different, right? Yes. Um, uh, along with that, one of the things that uh, some of our questions we started to move towards, we wanted to hear impact 
on the environment that the teams work in, right? Mm -hmm. a, a classic hallmark of a good senior engineer is that not only are they able to take care of the technical need, but they also impact the technical environment that other people are working in, right? Yes. So a lot of, a lot of what your answers can start to focus on is not only this was the situation, but here's how I improved it, you know? Now we have CICD. Now we have better test coverage that helped other engineers uh, not run into the same problems, right? right? Not end up with egg on their face, right? Yes. It's about showing that you have impact to the environment, not just the code itself. Mm -hmm. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Um, maybe one thing from my side uh, regarding the resume as well. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe that was uh, hidden for purpose, but I kind of miss uh, some information regarding the companies. Um, like I, I see some um, some mentioning um, some mentions of um, numbers. That's uh, that's uh, if you read any articles that would would be saying that it's actually a very good sign that you mentioned that you uh, helped uh, help this project to yeah I don't know improved up to this number or um, yeah anything else in terms of numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I, I I'm not quite sure if I understand the context if, if I read uh, this uh, resume like uh, okay that's uh, that was some project that technology has been used there mm -hmm. uh, but uh, not much more than that to be honest okay um, so should I be describing um, the company itself or just um, in terms of numbers what impact I made yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, maybe a valid uh, question. Yeah. Um, yeah, the impact is a good one, but even just a high level, like this is what they do. They make mm -hmm. um, phones. I don't know. <laughs> right. They make phones. And on this uh, at this phone company, I helped with this part. Right. That mm -hmm. just like locks us in to like even uh, more specific questions that we can ask you. Great. Thank you. Got it. Thanks. Also interesting thing that uh, candidate number three, he could fit all his seven years in one page, which is, I think it's awesome. Um, yep, yep. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, candidate number three. And uh, let's move with candidate number four. And there is another question from Mitri is asking, um, do we have any separate mock interviews uh, for test pro students? And uh, I can tell you, we will have a separate interview for QA boot camps, like not only test pro, but all other uh, QA boot camps and all other dev boot camps. Um, just join to the Slack. We'll post their, um, you know, we'll post their the schedule, but it's going to be in November. So if you want to participate, uh, especially like, for uh, for students, that would be very very uh, useful. Okay, let's move candidate to, uh, number four. Are you ready? I am ready. Awesome. Okay. Let me share my screen. Thank you guys for uh, putting this together and uh, taking time out of your Saturday. Sure. Okay. All right. Please tell us about yourself. Okay, I'm candidate for uh, JK. Uh, I'm a front end focused full stack software engineer who cares deeply about building intuitive and tasteful websites and applications. After working in sales for several years, uh, my passions for problem solving and collaboration facilitated my journey into web development. My journey began with building WordPress based websites as a hobby which led to some word of mouth referrals for freelance web development contracts. After witnessing the power of helping a business grow through a website that I built and having a blast the entire time, I taught myself JavaScript and enrolled in a full stack software engineering immersive program at a local boot camp. Here I cultivated my technical and collaborative skills through building full stack projects using JavaScript, React, Redux, Node, and Express while following agile methodologies. And in August, I completed a software engineering fellowship at a startup that designs, develops, deploys, 
chatbots for businesses across a wide range of industries. And so this is where I did my last uh, major project. Um, so during the fellowship, I was uh, responsible for building an admin dashboard that allows the startup's clients to manage their chatbots interactions with their users. So an admin should be able to see a list of users on this dashboard. And when a user um, is clicked on, uh, the interface um, needs to display the bot user conversations, um, timestamps, contact information, uh, an identifier for the chatbot instance, and a button enabling the toggling of uh, the bot status. So you can set it on or off. Um, so um, when I was tasked with this project, initially it was uh, a bit daunting for me. It was my first time dealing with such a large code base. It was my first time using jQuery and we had a tight deadline. Um, so, and on top of that, the, the, the startup was going to use this dashboard in a demonstration with a rather large prospective customer um, at the end of the deadline. So um, I got to speed pretty quickly or as fast as I could with jQuery. Um, I managed to familiarize myself with the code base fairly quickly. Um, with uh, the help of the CTO, I was able to come to him with any questions that I had. Um, we had uh, weekly scrums with the CEO and the CTO so that I can just kind of go over my progress and they can let me know if I'm on the right track. Um, and ultimately, I was able to get the dashboard prototype running within the deadline. And uh, I built the dashboard front end using JavaScript, jQuery, CSS, HTML um, for the front end and Firebase and Firestore for the back end. Um, I wrote Firebase functions that triggered database calls um, from the front end uh, through Ajax. Um, and um, this was done upon different events such as dashboard loading, bot status, toggling, conversation on clicks, or when a chat or a conversation was in progress. Um, so yeah, that's that's the project, the last project that I worked on. All right, awesome. Let's move with the follow up questions. Yeah, um, uh, that's a really cool project. Um, I'm. I have so many questions there, but I'll just try one first, right? Um, sure. um, it is such a big shift to go from WordPress to this, because I can hear the architecture here, right, uh, of this project, and I can hear all the different pieces. Um, tell me a little bit about, like, for yourself, like, that process of, like, hey, one thing I'm working on WP theme, and next thing you know, there's a chat bot with, like, functions in Firebase, like what was that ramp up? What, what was, uh, how did you get yourself going? And also what is this timeline that we're talking about? You said it was a pretty aggressive deadline. Can you walk me through that a little bit? Sure. So um, that, um, when I first started using WordPress, um, what sent me down that rabbit hole of uh, software engineering, um, that was uh, quite a bit ago. And that's what got me started about thinking about JavaScript. And um, fortunately, I had the boot camp to kind of get me um, familiarized with proper front end and back end development. Um, and the most important thing about the boot camp was it taught me about how to learn new technologies. It taught me to just how to read documentation, how to go and look at Stack Overflow, how to, you know, find the right um, video series on YouTube so that I can get up to speed very quickly. Um, and so the process was um, when I got started on WordPress, there wasn't so much, there wasn't much of a format. It was a company that said, hey, um, I built this very cheap looking website on GoDaddy. Um, they were taking um, orders on it. And I saw yeah. it and I was like, I, I was very um, blunt. I was like, hey, you know, this is not a very professional looking site. Yeah, you right. put $19.99, that's great. Um, yeah. But it's not going to be a professional representation of your brand and where you want to be. Um, right. And so um, I said, you know, listen, I've, I'm just starting out with this, but I think I can do a much better job. Um, and so they gave me the flexibility to 
to make it work for them. They gave me some general guidelines, what they needed, and I kind of ran with that. I've always had an interest in design and art and, um, you know, so I, I had confidence that with enough time I can build something tasteful. So that was a big difference. I had a little bit more time. I had a little bit more leeway in terms of the direction I can take this as long as I can ultimately make it work for their business needs. Um, so this project um, with the, um, this, the, this uh, admin dashboard project was different in the sense that there was a set deadline. There was many specific things that needed to be done. So less flexibility in that end. Um, and the deadline was a month um, from basically the moment I started. Um, and so this was a prototype. So, I mean, they weren't expecting, you know, perfection, but it needed to work well enough to present to a customer. Um, and so the, at first, you know, I, I, I will admit that I might have frozen for a couple of days just because I was so overwhelmed with jQuery <laughs> and the large code base. Sure, um, sure. But then um, I managed to ground myself and um, ask the right questions, you know, learn enough to be able to um, move forward. And then I started to have some victories. I finished kind of the MVP that I had set for myself um, you know, showed that to the CEO, the CTO, they were happy. And then um, I moved on. I used that momentum to, to keep going. Um, and so that was something that I used to kind of help me stay on track. And a lot of, a lot of caffeine and, and, and <laughs> you know, that, nice. that was also very helpful. Uh, yes, engineering. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Um, yeah, if I may, I saw, uh, I, I see the um, TypeScript mentioned in a, in a resume and uh, I'm wondering, um, do you have uh, any experience with that? And uh, if, if so, can you maybe uh, name a few things that uh, TypeScript, how TypeScript impacts uh, JavaScript development in terms of yeah, complexity, maybe uh, at, at some uh, te technical steps that uh, developers should do, things like that. So uh, TypeScript was something that I had to utilize for this um, project. And so, um, you know, the engineer that I worked with was adamant about it because um, he, you know, be working with such a large code base, um, we wanted to make sure that we're not passing in the wrong information and that we're able to get the inf exactly the information that we expect. We don't want to pollute. Um, you know, the functions, we don't want to pollute um, the code base with, with incorrect information. You can strictly set types. And so to me, I, I, I don't have a ton of experience with TypeScript, but for me, that's the most important thing. You want to be able to properly manage uh, the data that you're inputting and receiving. And so that to me is, you know, a strength of TypeScript. Any other follow-up questions, guys? Yeah, I guess uh, I, I'm really interested to, to hear what you want to kind of accomplish for yourself in the next year. Sure. So um, initially, I, you know, I started because I was able to help a business um, grow as a result of something that I did for them. You know, I had a lot of fun. And so... I've just had a lot of fun just adding technologies to my tool belt. It's just great. Like, I feel like I'm a superhero just kind of growing in his powers. Um, you know, when I first, when I first graduated from the boot camp, I considered myself to be just a front end guy. Um, but after completing the fellowship and having to work more with, you know, Firebase, Firestore, it did give me a little bit more confidence in working with the back end. So now, so my goal is to um, grow as a full stack developer, um, to explore new technologies, to um, as 
I look for a job in the meantime, you know, build projects that incorporate maybe serverless architecture um, or maybe, you know, just play around a little bit with more GraphQL, um, but while also um, playing around with new um, front end technologies, you know, I like animation. Um, so being able to play around with uh, sp um, spring a little bit more, um, being able to um, just kind of be experimental with with my front end designs rather. So lately I've been implementing more of like a, like an infinite scroll uh, layout, but having different transitions. So as the user scrolls down, maybe have components load from the left to right, just maybe a little bit more uh, experimental, artsy, cutting edge, um, just to kind of push the boundaries of, of design. Um, so that's my long winded way of saying that um, I just want to grow as a front end developer, as a back end developer, um, just play with new technologies. Yeah. I think that that's um, awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, a question I had is so it, it's so fascinating to hear, see that you started off as an AE, right? Account executive, uh, and then moving into this field. Now, um, sales is very much like you hit the numbers this quarter. Right, like that's that's how that uh, works, and that's the value there. How did you apply that sort of like? It's a, it's a binary yes no. You hit the numbers or you didn't, right? Um, how did you apply those skills as you switched over into this brand new field of using the data to define your success? So, in order to be successful in sales. Um, you, you know, you have different ways of, of approaching that. Some people are the sharks, um, you know, and that's how they hit the numbers. That's not my personality. Right, right. Um, right. I, was, I got into sales initially because I'm very outgoing, very friendly. I love to build relationships. I love to um, learn about my coworkers. I want to learn about my customers. You know, I want to, you know, to be successful, at least for me, you want to know what problems your customers are having and help them solve it through mm -hmm, the product mm -hmm. that you're offering. And right. so I take that approach with software engineering. You know, we want to build something. So you want to get to know your team, see what their strengths are and work together to utilize our strengths collectively to work on uh, efficiently on this project, you know, but also not just leaning on our strengths, but also kind of strengthening our weaknesses too. So mm -hmm. because I'm a front end guy, maybe there might be an opportunity for me to do something on the back end so I can grow. But so um, I think just for me, what helped was just, you know, software engineering is about collaboration. Um, and so that is something that I was able to lean on. Um, and also it's about solving problems, which you have to do you know, in sales. And the better I was at solving problems in sales, the more my numbers were able to grow. And mm -hmm. so that's kind of the, the similarities that I see. Great. Two. Yeah, excellent. Uh, follow on question uh, regarding the topic of teams. Uh, what do you think is uh, your strongest asset you bring to a team? Uh, the strongest asset that I bring is um, this, that I'm um, humble, positive, um, that I'm able to operate with diplomacy. So it, you know, at the boot camp we had uh, our capstone project, which is our final project. And there were times where there were some disagreements between team members. Um, you know, we want different people wanted um, to work on certain features. Um, and so I came in and I was able to kind of negotiate kind of a middle ground for everyone so that we were able to rather than, you know, argue about what features to work on, we spent our time actually working on things. Um, and I was able to, you know, people were, were getting very frustrated um, because of these arguments, but I was able to keep my cool 
um, and just say, hey, listen, let's figure this out. Because if we're all just angry and upset, you know, we're not going to get anything done. It's, that's not going to help anybody. So I think that's what I'm able to bring, just a sense of peace, um, you know, and just positivity. Nice. Were there ever times where that didn't work? <laughs> um, there were times where that approach took longer than expected to work. Um, but uh, I, I just kept going because we had no choice but to finish the project and we wanted to make sure that we hit our goals. And so uh, sometimes we just need to take a step out. So I, I, you know, would come up with an idea such as, hey, let's go out and get some coffee together. Let's cool off. Maybe we need to take a few minutes away from this and just kind of recalibrate ourselves. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm very comfortable with the whole people dynamic. Oh, that's awesome. Let's uh, go with the feedback guys. Who want to start first? Yeah, I'll start. Um, I, um, that, that sales answer was just like spot on. Like that was like, that's, that's sort of the perfect answer, right? I look to solve customer problems and it doesn't matter whether I'm in sales or I'm engineering, I'm solving the customer problem it was just, I'm stealing that. Like I'm doing that, man. Like I'm, I'm doing that for my interviews in the future. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I really appreciated that. Uh, I also, um, one of the things that I picked up on is um, uh, similar to uh, another, another candidate, um, you, you know where you're not good. You know what you, you're better at. Like, so for example, you want to grow as full stack developer. You've heard, you mentioned you've heard serverless architecture. Right. But you didn't come out and be like, yeah, I'm going to do serverless. I'm going to like, it wasn't, it was just like, Hey, I don't know what this is. And I'm really curious. Right. So it's coming from a place of sort of humility, right. Of what you do and don't know. And so uh, there were a lot of things I, I really appreciated about uh, um, um, listening to your answers. Thank you. Yeah. I, I felt like you did an incredibly good job uh, pulling in your, your previous story into your, a lot of your answers. I felt like you established a, like you convinced me, you have a very high degree of self-awareness and, and initiative when it comes to like solving people's problems. That's, a, that's an incredibly valuable skill. Um, I, thought, I also thought you, you had some really good uh, phrases. You know, I, I always look for like a couple of different phrases that sort of stand out. You mentioned at the very beginning, word of mouth you established yourself very, very quickly as somebody who people want to work with simply because of that phrase, right? Now, I'm not saying everyone should go out and just start like dropping phrases like that, but it's an example where you have found one or two very specific examples. You've woven that into, you know, your first one minute of explaining who you are, and it instantly convinces me that you're you're somebody who's reliable, who's trustworthy, and and would be excellent to work with, right? Um, you you also uh, mentioned a couple of other phrases uh, in the same in the same vein that I wrote down. How to learn technology? You're a superhero, growing in his powers. Diplomacy. Those are all very very excellent keywords. And when you said them, I got the I got the perception that you really did understand. You know, you really did understand the the soft skill underneath. So excellent job. Thank you. I, I will agree with uh, what Pin has said. I, I really enjoyed the story behind the last project that you, that you uh, was uh, telling us. I was, um, I was really interesting and I uh, was uh, kind of curious to hear a story about Jake Weary in, in this year, but uh, yeah. Um, also, also, I think uh, 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 that relates to the previous uh, to the previous um, resume that we saw. That uh, uh, in here, the project uh, in the project description, uh, uh, we can see the like one one sentence describing the project. Uh, so for me, that's uh, that's kind of brings the context that uh, that I'm maybe was missing in the, in the other one. Um, yeah, that's that's my little feedback. <clears throat> What could be improved, guys? I'm going to go out on a limb and just say, maybe, did you have a prepared, 
were you reading uh, a script for your first uh, introduction? It's okay if you were. I, I understand this format is a little bit different and you wouldn't necessarily have that for... I, I did have some general bullet points that I wanted to hit. Okay. So the, uh, the reason why I, I say that is just because I could, I could sort of tell there was a little bit of a difference in how you were answering our questions and how you were uh, doing the introduction. Now, the positive side of that is that it's very, very important to nail your story correctly. Uh, what I would suggest is to work on, work on the core elements of that and become, like try to work on your comfort with it so that you can kind of just speak it, you know, without necessarily having to refer back to, to like specific snippets. Um, because it's a, it's a balancing act, right? You want to hit all of the high points, but you don't want to uh, have to rely on enough notes that it sounds uh, like a script, right? That being said, the rest of your, uh, the rest of how you answered your questions uh, kind of, kind of uh, plugged a lot of those, uh, those concerns. I agree. Thank you. Um, I thought that um, you have a, a unique storytelling style, um, which, which you should absolutely keep and continue to, it's going to serve you re really well. Um, the, uh, the thing could, I, and this is such a, like, I'm really getting nitpicky here. There's very little that I could find, but the, the only thing was that I would have loved to get a little bit more specifics on the tech, like the technical challenges you had when you were talking about the, um, what did you do with the last project? I got the story, the story about the jQuery, the deadline, that we got this, uh, we got this, and this, um, you know, there's a client that's waiting for it. That, the story was great, right? But I would love to hear like, and I didn't know this part about the technical challenge, and then I had to do this to get to that, right? But that's the feedback I would give. Perfect, thank you. Uh, yeah, one one word from my side. Uh, yeah, I, I also agree about this uh, technological uh, part. Um, so I, I will just um, uh, maybe remind uh, one more time that uh, please be careful with the mentioning technologies in in your resume, so that uh, can bring some uh, not wanted questions, I guess. And uh, yeah, I just wish you to find uh, some uh, some. Uh, uh, difficult, challenging project and from technology, a specific way of um, looking into it. And um, yeah, be proud of that. I'm pretty sure you will uh, manage it. Thank you so much, Alex and everyone. All right, thank you very much, candidate number four. Uh, let's wrap it up today's session. And guys, I want to do a quick poll. We usually do the quick poll in the end. Uh, let's have one minute to answer those questions. And that's the question for us also, just everybody in the room. And for you too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for <okay>. everybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow, answers completely different. That's so interesting. I think one of the poll questions should have been, do you like my microphone? The answer would have been all the same. <laughs> yes, we love your microphone. <laughs> yeah, I love it too. <laughs> Okay, let's end the poll. And to be honest, we don't have clear winner. Uh, candidate number two looks like, but that's so interesting. Uh, like on the previous uh, meetups, we had we had clear winners. Like oh, ever, like ninety nine percent was voting for one person over another, but here's like almost even just a little bit. Uh, ahead candidate number two. Congrats candidate number two. Uh, 
Um, okay. Yeah, we can't see the poll, Kenny. Oh, you can't. Okay, well, ignore you. We can't. Okay, we can't okay, see, okay. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay, there it is. Here we go. There it is. Okay, and and we could we can't see you either, just for what it's worth. Oh, what happened? <laughs> I, I thought it was a joke. It said battery exhausted. I was like, oh, yeah. I you were making some kind of funny meme thing. Yeah. But... <laughs> I thought you were saying your battery was exhausted. Yeah, yeah, that's. What I, I can believe it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. <laughs> oh, okay. Interesting. That's so interesting, right? Um. One second. Okay, ah, now it's it here we go. All right, so again, congratulations, uh, candidate number two. Looks like you were the winner, and um, yeah, I'm glad that for majority it was a useful session, and we will gonna do this. And the third one, I specifically brought it up because I was like hesitating. Should we bring the coding challenges into these sessions? Looks like people want to do this. All right. Um, some people don't want to really do this. Um, it's another thing, but that's, that's interesting. Okay. So let's wrap it up. And, um, I don't know. All four candidates were pretty amazing, and I think that's why uh, there was no clear, like, hundred percent winner. But I think that was very useful for all of us. Um, any any thoughts, Vinosh? How how you like it? What do you think about all like all? Candidates? Yeah, I had a lot of fun. I appreciated how prepared everyone was. Um, they came in ready to go, and uh, it was um, uh, and appreciate them taking uh, their Saturday to be here as well. So that was awesome. Totally, totally. All right, thank you very much, dear managers, me and Vinosh, Alex. I really appreciate that you are doing this as well. And guys, we all see you on the next mock interview sessions. Please. Keep it up uh, and join to our Slack channel. If you still haven't, um, you can find the link above on the chat. And happy, have a good weekend, right? All right. Thank you. Have a good one.